Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guests today are identical twin brothers who both play for the Seattle Seahawks. Their inspiring journey is documented in their new book, Inseparable. Shaquille and Shaquem Griffin. It's good to see you guys again. It's yes. a pleasure. Thanks I for just, having us. Yeah, I just met you guys the other night for the first time. It was good talking to you. Um, you're already dancing, which leads me into my first question. I want to get the hard-hitting stuff right out of the way. You guys have a dance group called Dancing Dynasty. Where did this start? <clears throat> you got a game? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is this how we're going to be all yeah, day? It, it started back home. Um, you know, some friends of ours. It actually was a family. Brothers. Family yeah, it was family. actually a family. It was a family thing them. before we actually joined. Um, called, it was called the LaShores. We used to run track with them, we used to go to school with them, all used to hang out. And then they used to always dance. I was like, I want to dance with y'all. Like, I want to join a group. And we didn't really know how to dance then, but they taught us. We used to literally go to practice and all, like every You day. go to practice your dance moves? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We wasn't as good as everybody else, but we... <clears throat> we gave like, effort. Yeah, a lot of effort. How would you guys rate yourselves now? Um, no. As in what it was then? No, just like an overall one to 10 scale of good dancer. How are you guys? Five. Oh, five or six. six. Okay, I mean, we and got really good rhythm. We, like we not. We got good rhythm. Okay, what's like the, the go-to move? Choreography is not really our thing. I'm just about to move my shoulders. Just, just the shoulder. We move? got some good rhythm. Just, like just if we're if we're out and we're having fun, like and partying, we'll look we'll look good dancing and moving around. Okay, yeah. so it's just the shoulder. Like I'm, I'm doing. Yeah, we just, right we just, now. Yeah, we just keep it. We just keep, keep it light. Just shoulder move. Okay. Thank you, light. You, so you guys have the same dance moves, identical twins. You guys even have identical tattoos on your left arms. Is that right? Yes. yes is, there a, is there a story behind this? Um, not really too much of a story. So the way it started, um, our oldest brother, he had got the Virgin Mary on his shoulder. And then my next, the oldest brother, like the next one, he got the same thing. So it's like, okay. So this was like one of our first tattoos. He was like, you know what? That's kind of keep that theme going. Everybody's doing it. So all the brothers had this same tattoo. All four of us had the same tattoo on oh, the uniform. Okay. So me and my brother just kind of went overboard with it. it. Was like, you know what? Since we did it, let's just make the <laughs> whole left arm the same. So your guys' left arms are exactly the same. Yeah. Pretty he still got some stuff he got to add. I got, I got oh. add more stuff too. Yeah. yeah. What's the delay? I was in college. Oh, okay. That yeah, was my yeah. first I was, year. So I, was I, was in, I was in college. All right. So you got some catching up to do. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't <laughs> want to pay for it. I was a college That's, student. That is not true. You don't want to pay for it? No, it's not I mean, you got to help your brother out. It's not there. He actually, um, during camp, he got scratched up really bad, so he told you he had to wait to uh -huh. his scratching mm. and stuff healed up. So that's actually the mm. truth, but it's cool. It's the off-season now. It's the time to do it. Yeah, it's my story. I can tell her how I want it. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> they try to make something up. <clears throat> uh, on a more serious note, Shaquem, for people who do not know what this is, you had amniotic band syndrome in utero. Can mm -hmm. you explain what that is? Um, the best way to put it was um, a umbilical cord right around my wrist, so it didn't give the chance to, to have circulation for it to grow. And the doctors gave my mom the, the chance to say, you can remove the umbilical cord from around my wrist, but there's a chance that it can wrap around my brother's neck. And I, don't, I, th I think that's a real tough decision when it comes to a mom. To, you know, it's the possibility that you can save his hand, but you can hurt the other twin. So it was like, just leave it on there. And my, my hand didn't get a chance to fully develop because of the lack of oxygen it had. One of the, and your book is so good, one of the most powerful stories that comes out of it is, <laughs> and you're smiling, but it, it's, your mom walks into the kitchen, um, you have a knife in your hand, and you're about to cut off your hand. What was it about the condition that you had that led to that moment? Um, it just, everything was just so sensitive. Um, not having a chance for my fingers to fully grow, it was just, you know, every time I used to move or bump or roll over on it, it used to be like just extraordinary pain. It just hurt so much. And then like, I was young too, so I was only four years old. So it's like, it's a lot of crying nights and waking up my brother and waking up everybody else in the house and my mom had to rock me back to sleep. And I tend to get old. They're just going through the same thing. It's like, I can't do this every single day and hope that it's gonna get better. So it's like, I made a decision for myself to cut my own hand off. And it's crazy because I'm four years old, so you can imagine how much pain I was going through at that time when you got a four year old trying to climb the kitchen draw just to get a kitchen knife. You obviously, you know, had to endure some roadblocks and obviously kids can be cruel. There's a lot of bullying that goes on. Also coaches, which just blows my mind that that's even still a thing. Tell me about a time when you were eight years old. What happened? Um, it was getting ready for a, a playoff game to go to the championship. Um, 
what it's called, Varsity Flyweights. Yeah. Um, and then we had to go way in, and this is my first encounter when it comes to like somebody, you know, downplaying my skill or somebody telling me that I'm not able to do something. So it was, it was definitely the, the first experience. And you, you would think that you'll get it from like one of your peers or anything, but it was like it was a coach who was supposed to be, you know, instilling you know positive reinforcement and stuff. And mm -hmm. that's the total opposite of what he gave me. And it's crazy because when I tried to weigh in, everybody had to weigh in before the game. So I weighed in and I made sure that I knew I was gonna make. I was knew I was gonna make weight because I weighed in prior before then. Mm -hmm. And then once he said I was overweight, I just started crying because it's like there's no way that I can't play in this playoff game mm -hmm. to help my team go to the championship. And then my coach weighed me in again and said I made weight, so he had to confront the other coach. And he was just like, I'm just trying to protect him. Uh, this game is not made for one-handed players. It's a two-handed uh, player game. He gonna be out there getting hurt and stuff. And I'm just like, I've been playing what? the whole season. Like, <laughs> a grown know. man said that. Yeah, and I've been playing the entire season, so it's like it's kind of crazy that you can, you know, be so negative to somebody who trying to get everything they have to play football. And then I ended up getting an interception and we won the game. For you, as his brother, you already said that you took things sometimes more personally than you did. When you hear a coach tell your brother this is a two-handed sport, what are you thinking? They actually didn't even tell me this until after. So I weighed in and just kept it moving when we got some food before the game. And this situation, I wasn't even told until after the game. But um, Is that a good thing, probably? Yes. <laughs> you might have been kicked out, huh? Yeah, I would have been pretty upset. <laughs> what was your reaction? Um, after hearing it, you know, it was, we had one, so it, that kind of helped a little bit. So, you know, after hearing that situation, it was just kind of hard to hear it. But it, the way he played and for us to win, it kind of made sense because he played with so much aggression. And, and the plays that he made, it was just like, he had not made all season. He was doing My things. My first that, interception ever yeah, in my life. So <laughs> Did you look over at that coach it. right away? And I was a little dizzy after the interception. I kind of caught the ball and, like, spent on my back. <laughs> so I got up and I just threw the ball to the sideline and just ran off. Yeah, I was, we were pretty excited around that. Yeah. That time we were pretty young. <laughs> Did you guys celebrate after that? Do you remember? Oh, I got $3 from my dad, I think. $3? All right. Yeah, so Rich. That's a good start. Yeah. 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 What'd yeah. you buy with that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably candy. Candy. Uh, snacks. Your, your dad had a motto yeah. that nothing comes easy. And that's, <clears throat> we talked the other night, this is a really important thing for you guys you can take the saying for what it is, but what does right. it mean to you guys? Um, for us, it's just, you gotta work for what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my dad was like the pinnacle of that. Um, just watching him, you know, handle things and him starting his own business and showing how much ambition he had to get things done. So he always instilled that in us to make sure that if you want something, you gotta work for it. And even if we wanted to get something from him, it was like, what are we willing to do to get that? Like, if I want to $5, he's like, you can watch the car. It's like, he installed that while I was growing up, like, you can't just feel like he's gonna be able to just get anything you want. You gotta be able to work for it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, and if you wanna be a good ball player, if you wanna be able to be that starter, if you wanna be that guy, you gotta work for that. You gotta break your butt off to get there. Yeah. And it all started with just watching him do that. How did that help you guys, that motto, through some of the tough times you've had? I felt it helped us a lot, uh, really a lot, cause I feel like he was trying to teach us never look for handouts, you know? Mm -hmm. If you feel like you can do it yourself, you don't have to depend on no one. And I feel like that was his main thing that he was trying to instill in us, just to be able to depend on each other instead of having to depend on someone else. And um, I feel like that, that helped us in the long run because it, we always had each other back. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.